What's up everybody? My name is Pauline and I'm a physical therapist and you're watching Clinical Sprinkles. I realize that right around the corner is going to be the PT board exam here and and I guess this advice is for people who are planning to take it in the next round, but or if anyone who's going to be taking it in the future, I'm trying to give tips that work for like time management and organization that helps kind of give you guys some structure into how to organize your next few months. So when I finished PT school, we kind of finished at an awkward time. We finished in, like, we had to go back to school for a month of electives, and we had to do, um, so our month fell in the month that PT boards were offered, and you had to get, like, special permission if you wanted to take PT boards that month. However, uh, the rest of us took our PT boards, like, three months later, and so my study schedule is spread out over three months. I scheduled it so that I would work really hard on Monday through Friday and still give myself the weekends off. I was also working part-time, so about 20 hours a week as a PT license applicant. So this is manageable with a part-time job and studying pretty much full-time for boards. I mean, I feel like even giving myself Saturday and Sunday off, you still felt like you were working as hard as you were in PT school because, I mean, you want to do, you want to pass the first time around. And so I'm going to try to give you what worked really well for me and I passed first time around, my study group passed. And so I'm going to try to offer it to you guys, see if you guys find it helpful. So as far as study materials go, I bought the score builders of my year and I bought the O'Sullivan. So score builders and O'Sullivan were the two books that I, uh, it's not called O'Sullivan, but anyway, so there's, I had those two books and then I also paid for the PEAT exam. I didn't study as much from the O'Sullivan book only because that book was really intimidating. I mean, if you've seen it, there's like, it's like pages of like full text and not a lot of charts and pictures and visuals. And so, and it took up like the entire margin. So actually for the, for me, that was really intimidating. Whereas score builders was more spread out, colorful, and maybe I was just more receptive to that, but that's score builders was the one that I really concentrated on. And then O'Sullivan was really helpful for kind of like supplement material. If I got a question wrong on score builders and it wasn't, the answer wasn't there, then I'd refer to O'Sullivan. Um, but then that book, I really used it for the practice exams. So then having the score builders as practice exams and then your other book for the O'Sullivan for practice exams, like you want to take those ones first and save the peat for last. Hopefully you've heard this before, but as you take your practice exams through these like exam prep books, it's you're going to feel really discouraged and feel per and be prepared for that because I feel like I didn't pass my practice exams or I maybe came close to it towards the end of my studying, but I kind of spread it throughout as well. So that way I can kind of check to make sure that the topics that I did study for, I did really well on percentage wise. So then I would have time to go back to review it versus stacking all of the exams at the end. Plus there's a lot of mental fatigue that comes with taking the exam because you have to sit there and answer all of these questions. Plus, it's really valuable to be able to sit down and go through the test questions. Even for the ones you got right, you have to go through and make sure you read the explanation in the back of the book. And then, especially for the ones that you got wrong, make sure, like, I would write, I think I wrote myself out a note card for every question that I got wrong. And then I would, you know, test myself on those note cards to make sure that, that like, what I got wrong, I won't forget for when boards come around. Okay, so... Here's my score builders book. I took my test in 2016 and I wouldn't recommend taking um, the older editions personally because the year that I graduated in 2016, the year after, they changed like the blood pressure normal guidelines and that's like, I feel like that rarely changes but when it did, like if you studied off of this book and then you studied off of this book in 2017, 
you would have gotten that question wrong. So I highly recommend actually investing in the book of your year. You can tell my score builders has been through a lot. It's been, it, it went with me everywhere for three months. Go with the one that works well for you. I have friends that studied through both score builders and the other book, um, the O'Sullivan book. I don't, yeah, um, they read both of them, but because I was working part time, there was no way, there was no way I was going to do that. I finished school in July, so I started studying in August. And so go on Microsoft Word, get a planner, whatever. Um, just get to the create your own calendar page, and then you write the dates in, and then I'll show you more specifically how I laid out the schedule. So here's my August schedule. I wanna highlight on here that I did write the content questions, like musculoskeletal will be about 30% of the exam, neuro about 25. You can check the website to see what the true percentages are, but this is what they were for the year that I took the test. Then based on the quantity of how much the test was gonna be asking for, I gave myself more time in terms of weeks to study for that subject. So you can see I started off with musculoskeletal for the first two weeks and then took a practice exam. And then I told myself which practice exam I was going to take. And then I alternated from the O'Sullivan to score builders. So then for musculoskeletal, I even broke down what page numbers I needed to read for each section and then tried to keep the amount the same as for each week. But then I went through the book and then marked like each page break so that I wouldn't stop in the middle of a subject. Then we get into September. Um, I gave myself a couple more um, practice exams. So this month we were able to put in three testing dates because there were because there were more weeks in this month particular, but also now you would have studied more content. And so it's more valuable to put more of the test towards the end. The first month it was more of like kind of gauge where your knowledge is at and fill in those blanks, but here's where you wanna load up with some more. It was also important in the month of September for fees and registration that is due on the 22nd, so I made note for myself and my study group that we needed to make sure that that got done this month. Then the last month of October, so this is where, this is the last month, and so it looks like I scheduled my two peats right here instead of the original ones that I had. Um, I think we kind of got behind on our reading, and so that's why we had to change that. Otherwise, October, so if this was the exam here, it looks, I gave myself a couple weeks buffer, right? So you don't want to study until the last day before the test. You want to give yourself a few weeks, so it looks like, Reading and content wise, it took until about week 11 to finish everything, but then the test was in week 13. So that gave myself some buffer in case we were behind, which it looks like we were because the peak I actually took the week before um, the actual exam. But you want to give yourself some mental like a break as well. So you want to kind of let all that information absorb, study here and there, but definitely don't study this date right there. So every week, my study group and I would schedule a virtual session that where we would meet on Google Hangouts or like some sort of video chat format so that we could quiz each other. So during the readings, we would always highlight points that we thought were really important and then bring it up during the discussion. And it was kind of funny because sometimes we'd, be, we'd mark the same thing and then quiz each other and say, oh yeah, I marked that same thing. So that way we would really narrow down our focus. Being able to study in a group and the ability to kind of quiz each other kind of pulls into active recall and not just like passive, like I'm reading this, I'm writing it down. Although I did do that, I think my, my best learning style was like quizzing and I did that during PT school. That's just my preference and this is the way that I carried on to preparation for the boards was to, I, we created this schedule we kept each other accountable and, you know, we just really worked hard for three months and, you know, try to give yourself some break. Although it's like, it feels like the biggest test of your life and it may, may be, it's still something that, you know, you have to give your body and mind time to absorb that information. And I think that's kind of how this schedule is laid out. 
So I hope you all do amazing and you find out sooner rather than later and that you just, you just pass. It feels so good to find out when you pass. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Clinical Sprinkles. If you learned something, please give a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. And as usual, please subscribe to my page so you don't miss out on future episodes. When I got my results, I was sitting in the car after going to the gym. One of my friends had texted me to let me know the results came in or that were posted online. And so I couldn't wait another second. I just checked it right then and there. I got to my car, shut the doors, checked online, and I passed. And I started crying. I was just crying by myself in the car in the gym parking lot. I was so happy. And then I called my husband and I told him that I passed. And he was like, good job. I knew you would.